So United States v. Perez Garcia out of the Ninth Circuit. Something to keep in mind for your, you know, now John Kostravi, immigration expert, starting immigration practice at the firm. You know, not you got to look at the non-immigration too, because all of this good law, especially on the crime of violence, aggravated felony, and it's got it's got implications beyond crime of violence, as you'll hear. So much of it is happening in the sentence enhancement context from federal criminal court, where it's a lot of the federal public defenders making these very smart arguments. And that's because of this decision called Borden out of the Supreme Court a couple of years ago that I'm talking about all the time, in which the Supreme Court essentially said that in order to be a crime of violence for both sentence enhancement and immigration purposes, again, crime of violence is an aggravated felony, meaning that it takes away a green card or bars you from relief or bars you from naturalization. The, the state statute needs to has a, have a mental state, a mens rea, of knowing or specific intent. Recklessness as to the force used will not cut it. Mm. And there, that's essentially bored down. Now, there's, does extreme recklessness cut it? What is extreme Who even knows? But that's essentially what's going on. And it's so important because over the last couple of years at the court, they, they've been really dumbing down the level of force required for something to be a crime of violence, like, you know, force, uh, it's becoming a lower, lower level, but the mens rea is becoming higher and higher and higher. Yeah. And there are so many criminal statutes that permit conviction with merely a reckless mens rea because these states want to criminalize. They want to put more people in jail for, quite frankly, violent things. Mm -hmm. And Mens rea is almost never divisible. And so here we have Cal Penal Code Section 245A1, assault with a deadly weapon other than a firearm. Sounds like a crime of violence. It's not under Borden, and meaning it's not for immigration, for sentence enhancement, all of it, because it can be committed recklessly. And it's, it's actually a very complicated argument. California, what is mens rea? Reckless, what is the mens rea requirement? It's been going on for like 150 years in the California state courts, but the prevailing definition of assault mens rea from the California Supreme Court is an intentional act, an actual knowledge of those facts. Well, blah, 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 whatever. It's like, you know, 1950s speak, yeah. but it really equates to recklessness or these general intent crimes. So much is a general intent crime to take you back to crim, crim, crim law 101. Yeah, the men's real. And, that right. But because, and so like, don't take anything for granted because because of that, I mean, there are so many cases. This decision itself mentions like a half dozen cases, both in the immigration and the sentence enhancement context, talking about that is now, quote, you know, I'm sorry, Borden establishes a bright line rule. If a statute criminalizes use of force committed only with the conscious disregard of a substantial risk to another person. It is not a crime of violence. Our prior cases do not apply that test and they impermissibly categorize, blah, blah, blah. They are not merely in tension with Bourdain. They are irreconcilable. And in layman's terms, that's a Ninth Circuit panel vacating Ninth Circuit precedent, which it's not allowed to do unless the Supreme Court has stepped in with a fundamental change in law. And it's not just about 245A1, assault with a deadly weapon, not a firearm. It's like all of the California assault crimes, of which there's like a half dozen or like 10, they all have the same mental state. Like even if it was assault, and I'm just making this up a bit, but like even if it was assault with a gun and a knife at the same time, <laughs> ridiculous statute, right? It would still just be Cal, it would still just be assault, which, in, which again has this reckless mens rea. How many other things in California and other states are just incorporating these old definitions of assault, which are bringing in with them this recklessness mens rea, because again, states have an incentive, at least they've d demonstrated it, to criminalize more conduct. It's taken us out of the crime of violence definition. It's a huge deal. This case alone vacates like six presidential Ninth Circuit decisions directly and probably a lot more uh, just using the logic. And then, oh, by the way, as I said at the end, which is totally not what the court says, but like, what about CIMTs? CIMTs aren't governed by Bourdain. But first of all, to say that like an assault crime is not a crime of violence, but it is a CIMT is a bit ridiculous, right? Because a crime of violence is, 
is more culpable conduct. So if it's, you know, how, how could it be, if it doesn't even satisfy this, how can you say it's like a lesser removable offense?